All right, let's talk about some April Fool's jokes that were initially believed and some jokes that were not. Mahomes working out with some Chiefs receivers and his interview with Albert Breer, Xavier Howard's extension with the Dolphins, and so much more. But first, how about those? What's up, guys? My name is Cole, and I do daily news about the Kansas City Chiefs and the NFL overall, so make sure to sub if you're new around here, hit that like button, and let's get into this news. Let's start off light with some April Fool's jokes the Chiefs tried to pull. Alan Wright, the director of equipment for the Chiefs, tried to fool us, showing a picture of an alternative helmet from the Chiefs. It looks cool, I guess, though some people referred to it as a Diet Coke, which was pretty funny to me. And then Travis Kelsey tweeted this out. I've idolized MJ since I was a young athlete. While baseball wasn't my path, I've decided to follow in his steps in a different way. I'm officially announcing that I will be stepping away from football to pursue my childhood dreams with the Colts. Thank you, Chiefs Kingdom. Well, thankfully, we know that is a joke, though. Kelsey, you got to do something better, maybe like getting traded to the Dolphins to follow Tyreek Hill, although that wouldn't have been funny, so glad he didn't do that. But if he was really going to baseball, my Thoughts here are, you think Mahomes would at least have offered to sign him to the Royals at least, right? I don't know, maybe. But his little April Fool's announcement made this gif worth everything. I don't know what's going on here, but it is hilarious. And then the Chiefs recently released a photo collection of some of the top photos from Arrowhead Stadium last season. It was really cool to look through and some of them were just great shots. If you didn't know, I'm a photographer and videographer for a living by trade. So I definitely appreciate creativity when I see it. So yeah, if you wanna see all of those photos, the link is in the description for you guys there. And then here are some key dates to watch out for regarding the Chiefs. You obviously have the NFL draft from April 20th to the 30th, then OTA off-season workouts. And those are from May 25th to the 26th, then May 31st to June 2nd, and finally June 7th to the 10th. Then you have their mandatory mini camp from June 14th to the 16th. The Chiefs will hold their rookie mini camp either on the weekend of May 6th to the 8th or the 15th to the 17th. However, that won't be confirmed by the team or made official until after the draft. And then the Chiefs held their local pro day yesterday for about 35 to 40 prospects. And sadly, I couldn't really find much info on this. Photos, videos, basically nothing. Maybe I didn't look hard enough, I don't know. But if I find more and figure out more about who was there and some stuff that happened, I will definitely keep you guys in the know about that. And then Mahomes had an interview very recently with senior NFL reporter Albert Breer. They jump into it starting with the Tyreek Hill trade and Mahomes apparently was kept in the loop the entire time. Quote, it more surprised me whenever it got to the point when we were really considering trading him. They kept me updated the entire time. I knew the extension talks were going on, but I mean, still, I played my entire career with Tyreek, so definitely there was a little bit of shock when he got traded. I know that we made a tremendous effort to try to keep him in Kansas City, but Tyreek, he's such a tremendous player. He got what he deserved, and I'm happy for him, but... Now we have to move forward. We have to move on and try to get as much as we could for him and try to build that receiving room again and to do it where we have the ability to go out there and compete every single week, which I trust Brett Veach and Coach Reed will do. So yeah, I figured he was in the know about all that, but it is comforting to me that they did keep him in the loop every step of the way. It looks like they've been doing that for a while now, actually. Mahomes said he's been involved pretty much his entire career as a starter. He remembers when they signed Watkins. He says, quote, I'm not saying who we need to sign and who we don't need to sign and all that different type of stuff, but they let me know what they're thinking and why they're thinking it. And I think that's why the relationship that we have in Kansas City is so great with Coach Reed and Veach and everybody. It's that they keep everybody informed of where we're going and what the vision is for the future. He says that's the reason he signed the contract that he did and why he knows he's going to be in KC for his entire career. Big statement. Love it. They go on to talk about the O-line and how he had to become even more of a leader because prior to the O-line shakeup last season, Mahomes had a lot of veterans on the line that had a lot of experience and he was able to really lean on them for input and even info went out in the huddle about defensive coverages and stuff like that. And then in regards to the new offensive line, he said, quote, so when I had all these offensive linemen come in this last year, I knew I had to set an example of how we do things. Love 
lucky enough for me, we had guys that absolutely love football. He compares the drastic change of the O-line last year to the flip in the wide receiver room this year. You know, they brought on Corey Coleman as a potential new guy to make the team. Then Tyreek Hill is gone. Byron Pringle's gone. D-Rob is gone. They sign MVS and Juju. And... They may trade for someone else this offseason and possibly at least bring in one to two, I don't know, maybe one receiver in the draft, we'll see. But he's confident that whatever happens, they will come together, learn, adapt, evolve, and unify over this offseason. What are your thoughts on this one, guys? How do you feel the wide receiver core will adapt and come together before the season? Do you think there will be more additions? Let me know in the comments down below. I'd love to hear your thoughts because there is a lot of changes, specifically with the wide receiver core. From there, they talked about Mahomes' curiosity on how defenses will play them next season with Hill being gone. Will it stay the too high shell look, or will they look at the film from midseason when Mahomes adjusted to that look, taking what the defenses gave him to go on consistent 12 to 14 drive plays fighting for every yard. Mahomes shared about how his adjustment to that too high safety look changed him. Quote, it 100% made me better, he said. The quicker decision making, getting the ball out of my hands, not just going for the home run every single time. I think it helped me involve more people in the offense too. Being able to get the ball to everybody, it helped me become a better quarterback. He says this next season, he will continue to spread the ball around even more now because defenses can't just go into a game with the mindset of just focus on Hill and Tyreek. I mentioned this yesterday a bit, but Mahomes reiterates to Breer that he wants to continue getting better and improving his pocket presence behind that great offensive line. He says this, quote, I think there were times last year when I got too jittery in the pocket and put them in bad position. So being able to be better within the pocket because knowing that's a strength of our team, that offensive line, I think that'll help our team in the long run. I'll be able to get the ball out of my hands. I'll be able to stay away from the big hits and the crazy plays and we'll have more success as a team. He then mentions there's a lot of guys coming in town at the end of the week to train with him to be together and working to build that chemistry. He says by the time they get to the season, we'll have a tight knit group with a lot of playmakers. And I did in fact find photos and videos of the guys working out together this weekend. Mahomes' conditioning coach, Bobby Stroop, recently shared a video of Mahomes and Cornell Powell getting some work in together, and then another clip of Mahomes working on his frontal plane pattern stability. And yo, look at homie on the other side about to die though. Be careful on that frontal plane please. There was also some photos posted of some Chiefs players getting in some work together. Some of the players out there catching these passes was Corey Coleman, Ronald Jones, Darius Fountain, Blake Bell, Cornell Powell, Josh Gordon, Derek Gore, and Mark Vidal. And a side note about Vidal, if you didn't know, he's the first player in 72 years to suit up for the NBA and then also the NFL. Pretty cool. And in other NFL news, Ian Rappaport himself got fooled on April Fool's Day. Cleveland Browns tight end David Njoku tweeted out that he instructed his agent to seek a trade and that he wanted his fans to know first. So Ian himself retweeted this saying, a trade requested. He then deleted that tweet a bit later and followed up with another tweet saying, deleted my original tweet, update, April Fool's isn't funny. And Joku himself followed up to his previous tweet saying, April Fool's baby. But there is actual news here regarding David and Joku. He's in active talks on an extension, sources say, and there is confidence it can get done by the July 15th deadline. And then the Raiders have agreed to terms with QB Nick Mullins. Right now it's him and Garrett Gilbert behind Derek Carr, so a good shot for him to land a backup gig. And then DK Metcalf recently revealed his diet. I'm not 100% sure if this is true, but the NFL even shared it, so. I'll share with you why I think it's believable. He says, I eat one meal a day, drink one coffee, and eat like three to four bags of candy. So the three to four bags of candy part is a little wild to me because I'm more of a chocolate guy myself, but here's why this is believable. I myself do intermittent fasting and I only eat one to two meals a day. I drink black coffee in the morning and use the caffeine as a hunger suppressant and typically have a four to five hour eating window from about 1 p.m. to 6 p.m. So yeah, 
This is very believable, but he'd need to consume a massive amount of calories within that window, being the athlete that he is. Anyway, I digress on that. And then the Bucks agreed to terms with running back Giovanni Bernard on a one-year deal. He had multiple offers, but chose to return to Tampa, another one of Brady's favorites back in the fold. And then Colin Kaepernick, exiled from the NFL for the past five years, is auditioning for any teams that may be interested in him Saturday at the University of Michigan spring game. The former San Francisco 49ers quarterback was invited to have a throwing exhibition by Michigan coach Jim Harbaugh, his coach with the NFC West franchise. Kaepernick's throwing event was announced on the official NFL personnel notice Friday, which Pro Football Network obtained. And it said this, free agent QB Colin Kaepernick will hold an exhibition throwing event with some draft eligible players during halftime of Michigan spring game tomorrow. NFL club personnel in attendance are permitted to watch the event. I'm glad they're permitted to watch the event. That would be weird if they were just like, hey, leave during halftime and then come back. Anyway, it's got to be tough for Kaepernick. He hasn't played in the NFL in five years and is now 34 years of age. Seahawks head coach Pete Carroll recently said, though, he believes Cap deserves another chance in the NFL, but of course then follows up with he's just not sure it's with the Seahawks. And if you asked every other head coach in the NFL that same question, I'd imagine most of them would say something very similar to that. I'm honestly not sure, guys, that we will ever see Cap back in the league ever again. And then Dolphins cornerback Xavier Howard agreed to a new five-year contract with $50,691,177 in new money. Why that seemingly random amount of money, you ask? Well, I'm glad you did. It's because he previously had three years and $39,308,823 left on his old deal. So in all, he is now under contract for five years and $90 million. And that is a mammoth amount of money. Awesome contract. Sheesh. Apparently, there's an additional $5 million on top of that that could be earned in incentives. And it looks like the Dolphins and Howard agreed to a restructured contract prior to last season with an understanding that a new deal would be discussed this offseason. And Miami takes care of one of the best players in the league and has a core piece under contract for five more years. And then I guess there's some rumors going around, and this is not an April Fool's joke, that Tom Brady's return to Tampa Bay is something that caused Bruce Arians retirement. They're saying that Brady himself was the one who actually was pushing for it. So yeah, Arians addressed the rift rumors yesterday at his retirement presser. According to Arians himself, Brady's return actually made his decision to hand the reins to Todd Bowles even easier. So yeah, there will be some changes on offense under Bowles that Brady will embrace. A commitment to run the football more is one, but those close to Brady and Arians say the Bucks QB did not push for this. Albert Breer responds to this as well, saying, had there been friction? Sure, but Arians hope from the time he took the job, which was a year before Brady even arrived, was that he'd be able to hand it off to Todd Bowles. He saw the chance to do that with Brady in place and took it. What are your guys' thoughts on this? Do you believe it? I mean, I don't know that Arians would just like come right out and be like, yeah, Tom Brady and I just really don't get along. So I'm just going to retire so he can finish out another couple of years. Like he would never say that. But do I believe that was the case? Not really. But on the subject of the Buccaneers and Todd Bowles, Todd Bowles himself is excited for his second shot at a head coaching position. If you didn't know, he was the head coach of the Jets for four seasons from 2015 to 2018, and things did not go so well. Many people put the full blame on Todd Bowles, saying he doesn't have what it takes to be a head coach, but I'm not sure it's that simple because prior to Bowles even taking over for the Jets in 2015, they had not had a winning season in over three years. He was put into a difficult situation and did not succeed. Should he take some of the blame? Oh yeah, for sure. But the Jets have been trash. I mean, absolute dumpster juice for as long as I can remember. It's hard to come into a program that's been horrible and suddenly make them great overnight. I mean, ever since Todd Bowles was let go in 2018, they've remained horrible. Just go look at their record. It is it is bad. Anyway, I say all that to say this. Typically franchises, like the Jets for example, make coaching changes because the team is losing due to poor coaching and inadequate roster or internal dysfunction. Sometimes it's 
for all three reasons and more. That means new coaches often step into difficult situations that can take years to turn around. Well, such is not the case with the Bucks. They won the Super Bowl two years ago and claimed the NFC South title last season after a 13-4 regular season. So they not only have a loaded roster, which includes quarterback Tom Brady, but an experienced and talented coaching staff that returns completely intact. That is about as good as it gets for a new coach considering it's rare to inherit a Super Bowl caliber roster in year one. But when it does happen, history says success is highly likely to follow, at least in the short term. So this is definitely going to be a true test for Todd Bowles to show he has what it takes to be a head coach. We will have to see how that pans out. How do you think it's going to pan out? I mean, as long as Brady's there, I think it's going to be straight. He's going to be able to recruit players back to be able to play for him and stuff like that. But once Brady leaves, I think that's the true test. What happens from there? Let me know your thoughts on that in the comments down below. I'm very curious to what you guys think. And that's going to do it for today. Make sure to sub for more daily news like this and check out this video here from the previous day's news in case you missed it. So until next time, let's go. Let's go. How about those? <laughs>